everybody, it's Janine over at Slow Happy Vintage, and I'm here back with some more things to show you. Um, getting to the question again, do I wear vintage jewelry? Yes, I do. I'm actually wearing quite a bit of it today, vintage and antique. So this right here is a 1928 necklace, little choker necklace, and I'm not exactly sure how old this one is. It is a pendant with a little rose enamel rose on it with gold edging got my puffy gold hoop earrings and then bracelet wise I've got a combination of bracelets now when you're wearing antique and vintage jewelry I believe it's always a good practice to wear some vintage with some modern to make it more relevant if I were to wear this AB coated rhinestone bracelet by itself it might look dated like I was rummaging through grandma's jewelry and decided to wear some but when I put it together with that little uh, modern piece with the little lock on it and then the piece on the far other end is from my mother's collection way back when probably mid-century when you put different things together like that and stack them it tends to look a little bit more relevant for today and the last piece of jewelry besides my wedding ring of course it keeps flipping around is this antique coral um, cameo ring. This is also an heirloom and I do wear it with honor. Really pretty little ring there. So I have been out yard sailing and going to thrift stores and just having a great time selling things too, which is also fun. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to show you some of the things that I have picked up. These pieces all came from an estate sale. Some lovely people just moved to our area. Apparently their grandmother passed away unfortunately and they were cleaning the house out so they could move in. Once again, I made another pile of things and I asked how much they wanted and she charged me five, actually six dollars for all of these things. Some things are pretty special and some are not so special but they're all really cute. This pair of earrings is just kind of a boho style dangle pair of earrings. The, this is the type of style that I love. So I am not sure how old these are. They look older to me or they look like they could possibly have been converted to pierced ears because I can see some solder down here. Anyway, they're stamped metal with glass glass bits down here. Really pretty. Very, very nouveau looking. I might test those wires too. I know this is not gold, but I, I'm a little suspicious about the, the wire, the ear wires. So we'll test those. Along with that, we have um, Isle of Sky enamel earrings. When you see Isle of Sky earrings on places like eBay, a lot of times they'll be associated with Laurel Birch, and they really have nothing to do with Laurel Birch. At a t there was a time I thought that they were a precursor to Laurel Birch's company, but no. Isle of Skye apparently, I believe, is a Scottish company that does um, enamel cloisonne type jewelry similar to, to the quality and style of Laurel Birch, but uh, not the same. And then some more cloisonne type. These are Meow. Uh, I have sold some Meow earrings before and they actually sold pretty well, pretty quickly. So I'll be getting those listed. They are signed Meow on the back with the little symbol on it. And the reason I bought this bag was for these. These are made in Mexico silver owl earrings with uh, abalone chips on them. They are Tasco earrings. Tax, Taxco. They have the, the maker's mark on there with all of the relative, relevant TR information, but they're super cute. I thought, you know, owls are pretty popular and I think these will sell pretty well. And then this piece, I need to test this too. It says sterling, S-T-E-R, on the clasp, but I don't know if these beads are sterling. So I'm gonna test that one. So we're gonna test this and we're gonna test those ear wires. So we'll hold those off to the side. And then the last piece in the jewelry lot that I bought was just because it was there. I don't normally pick these plastic West German pieces up but every once in a while if they're just there and you know I love pink pink's my favorite color so I went ahead and I threw that in there along with those jewelry items I picked up these candlesticks these are very mid-century looking very modernistic type 
pewter candlesticks. I believe they are made in India. They're not tremendously old, but I still think they're probably 70s, 80s. Uh, I thought they were really pretty. Comps on these were, are around 32 or so, so it's not too bad. And then one of the highlights of this trip was finding these. The lady who passed away painted these, and I'll tell you, this just made me smile. I just absolutely love this long hand-painted original artwork. It says original by lore in Solving, California. And then I believe this one is not from the same person, but this one was there too. And these, you know, they just make me smile. I've sold quite a few miniature paintings before, uh, but <laughs> these I think I might have to keep just because they're so happy. They're so bright and cheerful. So that was the uh, estate sale that I went to. I've started marking the bags just for what I paid for items rather than saying well this is from a yard sale this is from a thrift store so these I believe are mostly from a church rummage sale oh, I don't know if it's a church or if it was Elks Lodge or something with a few exceptions uh, these don't belong in there okay so these are just some fun I believe they're aluminum wire hammered aluminum wire uh, earrings they were a dollar, and then I found some Trafari earrings. Oh. Nope, these are not Trafari, these are Monet. So those are little Monet earrings. And to go along with that, I believe this is, this is a Napier bracelet. I didn't notice when I bought it that it had as much wear as it does, so I'm not quite sure what that's gonna, I don't think it's noticeable when you wear it but when you look at it close, you can see the wear. So I'm not sure about that. That may not have been a good purchase. And this ring, I just love this ring. I don't know how old it is, but that is my style too. And it was just a dollar. It is adjustable, so it will fit on any finger. Um, I do like that. See that up close. Very fun ring. And when I find AB Crystal necklaces for a dollar how can you pass that up even if it's just to look at and let the light shine on it's so pretty super super pretty double strand with a hook closure it's not marked at all but what a beautiful piece then this was kind of the sleeper nobody was paying any attention to this and i thought you know that looks like something i flipped it over and it is marked chantal thomas Apparently Chantal Thomas is a French designer. She designs a lot of lingerie and she has very few jewelry pieces. So these have a tendency to be pretty high dollar pieces. Uh, it's ceramic little tiles set in gold tone backings. Uh, it's marked on every single station and has a toggle clasp. It's only a dollar, so of course I'm gonna pick that up. Like I said, when I see things that are look high quality and I don't know what they are, I do like to pick them up and research them. So that was a good find. And then these pieces, you're probably thinking, Janine, why are you buying broken things? <laughs> I'm buying broken things. They're just a dollar in my favorite antique booth. He's got boxes and boxes of findings that you can just pick through and buy for a dollar a piece. And basically, I need these little tiny turquoise colored beads to repair some pieces so that's why I bought that and then this is a milk glass piece of a probably a piece of a necklace anyway I like to have these little milk glass beads and square beads along in my harvest box just in case I need something like that to repair something else so that's why I bought those now the things that I pulled out of here these were more expensive I bought these at an antique store in one of the cases. This was in the $12, $12 case? Yeah. Anybody recognize this? I showed you one a little while ago. I have a necklace made out of this. This is iris glass. I don't know if you can, how well you can see it, but there is a blue and green and pink stripes in, these gla in this glass. And this pin has got a C-clasp. It's probably, I would guess, 
30s. That's kind of when iris glass was in uh, in fashion, apparently. I'm not exactly sure of the process, but I know they, inf they in infuse something into the glass when it's forming and it causes those uh, colors. So I thought that was really, really nice. And then the other thing that I paid $12 for were these Scandinavian enamel earrings. These are signed Mika. Uh, Mika, Sterling, and Denmark. So these are very mid-century looking. The Scandinavian, Denmark area, Norway, they're just known for their amazing enamel. I have several enamel necklaces that I recently showed in a video and this is going to go into that collection until I get bold to sell them all. <laughs> oh, I do have so many things to show you. I don't even know where to start. Let's go back to these. These were five and ten dollars. These are all going to be for sale, I believe. You know, part of when I go shopping for things and I spend a lot of money, a lot of my purchases are made at thrift stores that benefit different organizations. So I don't feel bad. Even if I'm, if I find things and I spend a little bit too much on something, I feel like it's going to a good cause. Uh, this little dog bracelet is so cute. I did pay $10 for it but it's in really nice condition. Of course, it has a little bit of wear associated with age, but it's not signed. Oh, it is signed. It's signed Finesse and has a copyright mark. Now, near as I can tell, Finesse is an older company that um, either sold their designs to another company or somebody started knocking them off because I have seen this bracelet without a signature on it. Looking up the Finesse company, I can't really find much information about it. So if anybody knows anything about Finesse, please let me know in the comments. As for this bracelet, this particular thrift store does benefit um, a local animal rescue. So I felt pretty, pretty fine paying $10 for this, even if, even if it's only worth $10. <laughs> All right, the next place, where did I get this? This was $5 and I just thought it was beautiful. Um, it's gold tone. It is not signed, but it's got a nice long dangle to it. This is enamel with, it is missing a little pearl that I need to fix. And the chain, it's a double chain. One is white enamel and one is gold tone. So just another beautiful necklace. And it's got a fairly long chain too. And then this one I bought at a local thrift store that benefits a Christian school. It was $5, and I think these sell for around $25 to $30. So it is etched copper. Uh, looks like it, got, it has enamel on it as well with a stainless steel uh, bracelet cuff. It's a really nice design. We have a, a giant monarch population here. This is one of the areas that the monarchs do congregate at. Um, so it's kind of a, a nice piece unique to this area. Okay, are you ready for this one? <laughs> Look at this. Let's just, let's just take a moment for this piece. Is this, <laughs> this is something else. So I saw this in the same thrift store that I got the little dog bracelet. And they wanted, I don't want to say $25 or $30 for it. And I decided, you know what, it's not marked. I wasn't going to take a chance $25 or $30 for it. So I did not get it. And the next time I went back, they had moved it out of the case and onto the, you know, regular jewelry section. And so I started looking at it again and it still had a $25 price tag on it but I told the lady I said you know it's not marked it looks like it has a little bit of damage right here um, I wasn't gonna pay $25 for it we got to talking about animal rescue because I used to work at a local dog and cat rescue organization and you know we struck up a conversation and she said well you know we're all in this together if you wanted to buy that what do what would you want to pay for it 
And I said, well, to be honest, I don't normally pay more than about $10 for a piece. And so she said, sold. So I bought it for $10 and I took it home and I just am, I, I, I do love it. I would never wear something like this, but it's beautiful for display. And I'm going to test, I know this is just amethyst glass, but we're just going to test it anyway. It's got a book chain, almost looks like a um, damascene chain on it. It's got that black etching on it. And it looks like it's a, a, a better copy of a very elusive, exclusive Napier necklace. I'll post a picture of that necklace uh, in this video, but it's very well made. I've looked all over for a signature and I can't find one anywhere. So it's just one of those unmarked amazing things. I'm gonna have to put this on display for a while and then I'll put it up for sale. Getting down to the last of the things I'm going to show you today. These are kind of more typically the types of things that you're going to find when you go to different places. Um, there's not a whole lot really special about these. This is just a green enamel brooch. It does have a one dead stone on it that I'll may or may not fix. Um, but I, I want to say this was like a dollar. I think it was a dollar. I think all of these oh, were all this a dollar. No, I paid thirteen dollars for all of this, so I'm not sure what the prices were. Um, the only reason I bought these is because I have the matching brooch, so I'll put those together as a set for next Christmas. And then this right here, I'm convinced, is a Waterford crystal heart pendant necklace. Normally these are signed though, and I cannot find any signature on this but it is identical to every single Waterford heart pendants that I've seen so I'm pretty confident that that's what that is and then this set right here uh, these are this is a Monet set it's got some clip-on enamel earrings and it's got an enameled chain glass little station beads it's got one of the fancy clasps on it though can see that clasp right there it's kind of like one of the early lobster clasps they look a little bit different where the claws close like this instead of just the single claw it's got its little Monet hang tag so I just thought that was really really pretty it's probably uh, 50s or 60s a little bit of quick testing to do we were gonna test the wire on this so this is gonna be a gold test it's such a horrible noise and then we were going to test the silver on these beads. I'm confident that the chain itself is silver, but I gotta try to test these in an inconspicuous area. Oh, looks promising. All right, let's test silver first, because that's the easy one. Test silver with 18 karat gold testing solution and it causes the scrape to turn bright blue, which it does. Okay, so we know this whole thing is silver. So that is a very, that's a nice find. Wipe this real quick. And now this one, we're gonna start with maybe a 10 karat gold. 10 karat gold is eating it. So these are not gold. I mean, they could actually be like a nine karat, which was pretty popular for old, uh, old gold use. Okay, Presidium is warmed up. And like I said, I'm, I'm pretty confident that couldn't be anything other than glass, but I do like to test. And yep, right in the glass range. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, if you haven't liked, shared, or subscribed, please do so and hit the notifications if you want to be notified when my next video comes up. Um, in closing, I think I'm gonna go ahead and post a couple of pictures of recently sold items from my eBay page, just so you can get a feel for the types of things that I sell, both jewelry and other items. And until next time, hope you're having a great week. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.